Hello, hello. Today we're going to be talking about the code problem 1477. Find two non-overlapping subarrays, each with target sum. So I think it's pretty easy conceptually. We have to find two non-overlapping subarrays such that the target is equivalent to equal to the sum of those two subarrays. Um, and if you can't find two subarrays, you return negative one. So, you know, just a brief example. Um, let's look at a better example. So here we can see um, we have to return the sum of the two subarrays. So the solution here we can see um, with target of three, we have one. The solution is this subarray and then either this subarray or this subarray. And since that's size one plus size two, our answer is three. For alternatively, you know, you could look at this and say, well, this is target three, but you know, that has a size of three, and then you know, this is size one, so we would have a sum of four, which is greater than our previous sum of three. So let's just go right into the problem. So the first thing we like to do with any problem is sort of talk about intuition and go over sort of base cases or, or or cases that fail. So initially you might think, well, if I just keep a sliding window and I go through the array, maybe I can greedily pick um, intervals if they're shortest. So for example, let's start with this array in red on the right. You know, our target's 15. We would discover that right here we, we see that uh, we reach our target, so maybe we store this, you know, as a five. It's of length five, and uh, you know, maybe we say, well, let's keep going. So we can, you know, discover another interval here um, that also sums to fifteen, and that's size four. So let's, you know, replace this five with a four. Or let's assume that any overlapping interval, uh, if it's shorter, is just going to get replaced. All right, so we discover a four, we replace our five, it's overlapping because we're using the same three. And then when we get to the end, we realize uh, there's a one and a 14, but that overlaps with our answer from before. So, you know, if we cross this out, there's no solution. We've only found one interval. Uh, clearly that's not the right answer because the right answer is if we, you know, exclude this interval entirely and we, keep these two. Now, what's the idea behind this, you know, sort of in a more abstract sense? So if I told you the answer, if I told you the shortest two intervals in this range was seven and one, could you tell me the answer to this problem? I would argue you can because you can immediately see an interval here that satisfies our target of 12 and I just told you the shortest two intervals were 7 and 1. So you would conclude, well we have an interval size 1 and we have an interval size 2, so our answer is 3. All right, because you can, you can clearly see that you know, this interval doesn't overlap with anything in this sort of region. The now the, the the next sort of idea that we will have is how do we formalize this into something that can be written in code, right? And, and furthermore, what's the actual sort of algorithm, right? That's more specifically what the question is. So let's imagine we initialize our sort of world in a place where there is no solution. Both intervals just don't exist, right? And when we first look at the array, can we know immediately if the sort of interval satisfies the target? Well, yeah, we can, right? We can look at the first index and if that satisfies the target, oh, we've discovered an interval. So the question we have now now that we've discovered an interval that you know equals our target is okay what came before me and 
do I want to use this interval at all? So, you know, you would ask, given this position, what's before me? Well, uh, null and null is, okay, well, an interval of size 1 is definitely better than an interval of size null. But I haven't discovered a second interval yet. So basically what you're doing is you're looking at this interval of size 1 and you're taking the 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 sort of minimum the two minimum numbers of the set of 3. You have two numbers here that tell you the best up to that certain point and you have the new interval that you just discovered. So in this case it's going to be, you know, 1 and, and null. Right, we've only discovered one interval. So let's keep going with the algorithm. Now what does it do we logically do? Well, since we're kind of done with this interval, we can't really use anything with this interval again. Since we know the target, since we know the array is all sort of positive integers, moving only one pointer isn't going to help us, right? So let's just move both of the pointers. Let's just simplify things. When, whenever you have a window that sums to the target, you're done with those. You're done with both of the positions of those pointers. There's not going to be another window that helps you. So we move over by one. And we observe that our sum is now one. And we go, okay, well that's you know less than our target. So we know there's no possible interval that ends on this position. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that the best point up until this position is literally just the previous point. So there's nothing we can do here. Same thing with the next point. Literally just the previous point. We've only discovered one interval. Move the pointer up again. Oh, we go, okay, now I realize our sum. And by the way, while we're sort of moving these pointers, we can easily compute the next sum in sort of constant time, right? We don't need to go back and add this interval up starting from, this, starting from the beginning, right? We can just, as we move this pointer over, look at this value and say, oh, it's a 1, okay? Add 1 to my sum. Alternatively, if you move the left pointer over by 1, you say, okay, well, we're removing this element, so we're subtracting that, right? So we're, so we're not sort of computing this sum over and over and over again going back and forth in the array. So we discover an interval here of size 3. What does that mean? Well, that means that we need to ask the question 3 and all non-overlapping intervals up to a certain point. Where are the non-overlapping intervals with this position? Given, or sorry, not that position, the interval. So the non-overlapping intervals are going to be everything to the left of our left pointer, right? Everything sort of over here, which happens to be right here. We've already computed that. We already know the answer to that. So we have the question of 3, null, and 1. Give me the two smallest numbers from that set. Let's assume null is infinitely big, and by that token, in my code, I implemented this as actually infinity instead of null, but I think null is a little bit easier to explain. 3 and 1 are the best we can do up to this point, which you know sums to 4, so our, our answer right now is 4. But that's not the only question we need to ask, so I sort of didn't ask this question immediately because I didn't want to overwhelm, but we also need to ask is what we observe here, given this three and this non-overlapping intervals, better than everything else we've found up to this point? And in this case, and actually in this problem example, it is always going to be better, but you can imagine that we discover some solution um, maybe here uh, that is not better than the 3 and 1 that we discovered previously. So we need to be asking the question, is our 3 and 1 better than the sort of 1 and null? And you know, if you initialize these to infinity, you know, you can just ask, is the sum of 
of sort of this less than the sum of this. And if it is, then we want to stay with the solution we had. So let's continue with this example. So this interval is done. So we need to move our left and our right pointer over by one. And we realize our sum is greater than three. So, we, you know, it's seven. So we have to move our left pointer over by one and it's still larger. Move our left pointer over by one again. And it's still larger. So let's, you know, move the left pointer over by one and let's be smart about the right pointer and say, you know, if, if the right pointer ever falls behind, just move that up by one. So right now, you know, the, the, this five that we've moved our right pointer off of, we conclude oh, there's no interval that ends on five because we moved our right pointer, right? So we just look back and we fill in the best answer up to the point not including five because there's no interval that ends on five and we also observe there's no interval that ends on one but now the sum's too small so we move our right pointer and whenever we move our right pointer we literally just look back and we say just just give me the best that you have up to this point and now we realize that there is an interval that sums to three so we ask the same question we asked over here we have this entity three and one and we have all non-overlapping intervals, which just happens to be three and one as well. And we ask, sorry, this is a two of size two. And we ask the question, give me the three, give me the two smallest numbers from these numbers. Well, that's gonna be two and one. And is two and one better than this guy? Well, yeah, it is. So we keep the two and the one. And as we sort of continue this problem on, we can see that, you know, we shift the left over by one, we shift the right over by one. We realize the sum's too large. So we move the left over by one and we realize we're at the end of the array and the sum's still too large. So we just record our previous up to that point and then we're done and the algorithm terminates. So what's the runtime of this algorithm? Well, the runtime is gonna be O of N. Right, we're only going through this array once. Uh, we do have two pointers, so you know maybe it's on the order of something like two n, but um, we we only go through the algorithm. We only go through the array once, and as long as we're sort of storing these in a constant time lookup hash table, and computing this sum in constant time as we're moving through this array, then we're going to be you know running this algorithm in O of n time. So. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. The code is going to be, you know, in the comments um, below, and I uh, hope to see you in the next video.